Welcome, 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 everyone, as you are joining us with live streaming coverage from the floor of ITW 2024. An exciting first day for sure as we kick off again the largest global gathering of telecommunications and digital infrastructure leaders in the country, but in the world. Global, global guys. So, my name is Jamie Scott Okataya, CEO and founder. Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcast. Joining me here today, I'm so excited to introduce you to Alan Meeks. He's the president and COO of Mox Networks. Certainly a name that is gaining some, some uh, headlines, some momentum. Can you just start telling us a little bit about Mox? Yeah, no, thanks for having me. Appreciate you having me on the show. Um, yeah, so Mox, I mean, we really, the impetus of Mox is a healthcare network. So you can kind of think of us as like a, a healthcare content company that had to start its own carrier because we outgrew the traditional carrier. Interesting. Yep. Yeah. So, so we've had to uh, solve a lot of pain points for the doctor that owns us um, and Nantworks, our parent company, um, that we just could not solve with, with traditional telcos. So we, we've gone out there and you know put ducks in the ground and built the routes that were pain points for us with an eye towards the adjacent wholesale telco space is to what else would be you know diverse and interesting to that space as well. So we're not just building for ourselves, we're thinking about the rest of the industry as we do that. Ah, oh, brilliant. And so what role does long haul infrastructure play into the growth of AI and other new tech? Yeah, a great question. Um, you know, for, for us being, we can call us fancy plumbers, we're, we're, we just make the lines go between point A and point B. Um, and we do nothing but, you know, dark fiber, uh, dark fiber channel, which is colloquially known as spectrum in the industry, and wavelengths, right? So we're all layer one. So when you know, I can call AI a buzzword, but when buzzwords like this come up, whether it's edge or 5G or AI, really what it ends up meaning for companies like us and Mox is there's going to be a need for density of more fiber, more yeah. fiber in more places, metro and long haul. How it really plays into long haul, though, is that, you know, most of the long haul, at least in North America, is fairly old. Any route that's built over a few hundred miles was probably done between, you know, the late 90s and early 2000s. Yeah. So most of that fiber is starting to age out. And the newer equipment, DWDM equipment, we're all Sienna shop, best of breed. Um, it doesn't tolerate high loss on fiber. So we need to rebuild the, the long haul networks so that they can support the AI applications that we're seeing, uh, you know, as an onslaught right now. Uh, unbelievable. Absolutely brilliant. All right, so why is backhaul and connectivity to new data, center, new data centers and cable landing stations so important? Yeah, so as you know, originally with subsea cables, it was consortiums of carriers building them, and then you saw content players kind of get in those consortiums. Yeah. Now we're seeing content players building their own cables all on their own. Yeah. So they're not really thinking about the carrier when they're building those, right? Um, but carriers still need to use capacity on them. So there's a, a niche that we've found in solving um, you know, from CLS's cable landing stations into major data centers and interconnection points um, in, in sort of, we'll call them mid-mile builds, mm -hmm. right? And so we, where we find those pain points where a content company solves it for themselves, they don't solve it for another carrier. And so let's say it's a carrier out of market. Um, they're not licensed, let's say, in North America or Canada, and they want to use capacity. So not only will they have to come buy dark fiber, they have to then come license in the country, and they have to get the support to be able to do, you know, frontline maintenance and meet a, a four-hour MTTR so they can access all the AMP sites along the way. That's a lot to do, especially if you're not a licensed carrier. So what we've, or in that country, so what we've done is kind of made an easy button from these cable landing stations back to the data centers and interconnection points. A lot of times it starts as, you know, dark fiber, and then when they realize the obligation and the time frame it's going to take them to turn it up, we get another call and they start asking us about dark fiber channel. Can we light the fiber for them? So we've, we've really kind of hit our stride in building managed private networks in that niche. Managed private networks for a healthcare niche. I just love it. I love it. It's brilliant. I'm listening to you. I'm like, it sounds like a carrier, but so not. I, yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us today, Alan. Yeah. Guys, make sure you check out Moxnet Networks. Uh, what is the URL? Moxnetworks.com. Moxnetworks.com, guys. Check it out. Thank you for joining us, especially on this busy, incredible news-breaking day here at ITW. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in to JSA TV. Happy networking.